Thomas and me are going to talk about uh, the pyramid sites uh, in Ecuador, uh, Kochaski. And uh, this work wouldn't have been possible uh, if uh, Alden hadn't provided the data for this research. And uh, he will set the scene of the archaeology in this region. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this introduction, Gors. Irmela, I'm going to read about the first part of this talk, and Irmela is going to continue. Each year, for go the governor of the Pichincha province in Ecuador invites the indigenous and mestizo population to participate in a large festival at an archaeological park um, near the Ecuador. This is the archaeological site Cochasqui, located in, the, in northern Ecuador at the foothills of a dormant volcano at altitude of circa 3,000 meters. The site consists of 15 truncated pyramidal mounds and more than 20 round mounds. The gathering names to celebrate the spring equinox with a bonfire, or as the Kichwa speakers call it, a Nina, which means new fire. Alongside astronomic equinox, the Andean calendar year serves to mark agricultural purposes. The governor's invitations remind guests of nothing done, that the Andean agrarian calendar allocates 20, day, 20 days each month every five years for the spring equinox. If we see at the table on the slide, we know that there is always a specific day celebration for the equinox and it is always a Saturday or Sunday. Even though the astronomical event can happen any day of the week, the equinox is not celebrated on work days. We know that the date of the equinox varies each year from March 19 to um, 21, depending on location and corrections to a discord between the Gregorian calendar and the actual duration of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. But along the Ecuador, the equinox is supposed to occur regularly on starting one day before and concludes one day after, actually yesterday. In the table on the slide, there are only three festival days marked in black that consists, consists with three equinox days, March of 2011, March of 2015, March of 2016. The remaining festival days occur outside of the timing of the equinox. This incongruence is an important indicator that motivation is not the equinox, but rather the need to hold a festival at the pyramidal mounds that brings together the heterogeneous communities that comprise the Ecuadorian state. Yeah. Ethnologists, astronomers, astronomers and archaeologists have considered the possibility that the distribution of the pyramidal mounds with ramps with astronomical phenomena. However, Tchaikovsky and Sadovsky have concluded that there is no alignment of the pyramidal ramp mounds with the sun, the moon or the Pleiades, a group of known stars. They found no relationship between the movements of this cluster and or any other astronomical phenomena that could be associated uh, with the orientation of the, east, of the Earth and mounds. Um, German archaeologists would over them note that the orientation of the pyramidal mounds follows the terrain and that is well adapted to the circumscript topography. The latest archaeological discussions related to the functionality of the Kochaski complex tend to emphasize the ritual character of the, of the pyramids. However, as my colleague Tamara Bray comments, the monumental earthworks of Karanki territory have often been assigned a religious, a religious or ceremonial function. Thought, it is generally agreed that they served as house platforms, possibly for elite or classical residents. These two functions are not necessarily mutually exclusive. More recently, Ugalde and, and Dasuri had proposed that the functionality of the pyramidal mounds with ramps is not quotidian. Rather, their utilization is related to the existence of religious power centers. In this talk, we try to confirm this hypothesis through network analysis of intervisibility lines, and I give the words to Hermela. Okay, 
Now you have seen uh, some pictures of the pyramids, and uh, so the hypothesis is uh, uh, that we have ritual action on uh, all platforms, and uh, well, uh, the network analysis uh, will try to find out uh, if. Uh, and this hypothesis is really valid and uh, uh, this is work in progress and you will see that uh, this was the outline uh, of my talk I had uh, in mind in the first place and I'm not quite there yet. Uh, but let's dig into the subject. So if you want to do, do intervisibility, uh, of u shed analysis, you have uh, to have a digital terrain model, and uh, we have a very nice one with uh, two meter, uh, one meter elevation difference uh, uh, for the site, and uh, had to co combine it with uh, another low resolution elevation data uh, because uh, it uh, didn't um, cover whole, the whole of uh, the study area. Mm. So uh, this is a talk of itself, but don't focus on this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, mm, Tom's idea was, uh, um, or Tom really inspired uh, this work uh, by his publication, and uh, he said, uh, well, uh, don't look at just one point uh, and uh, calculate uh, view sheds, but uh, select uh, several points uh, and uh, collect uh, and uh, calculate view sheds. And uh, this is what I did, and uh, especially uh, with the uh, G pyramid, uh, which seems to be so prominent here. Uh, it's quite nice to have it uh, uh, eight uh, positions on this pyramid uh, because uh, uh, then you avoid the big hole in it uh, dug by uh, looters and uh, uh, later excavated in the early uh, 20th century uh, by a German. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, the whole... Um, calculation relies on uh, uh, that this <coughs> still is uh, more or less uh, the elevation distribution uh, uh, we had in, uh, in the times uh, when uh, the pre-Inca uh, population there uh, had uh, rituals or whatever. And uh, so uh, now I have 12 pyramids. Uh, Mm, called ABCD and so on, and um, uh, it's only 12 uh, pieces, but uh, by putting eight positions uh, on e each of the pyramid, uh, I can create a hell of a mess, uh, and uh, mm, so you get a very dense network uh, of intervisibilities, uh, and um, uh, so, uh, cleaning up this mess uh, is uh, this uh, picture. So, uh, you see uh, that uh, mm, just by adding up uh, the intervisibilities uh, uh, between each pyramid, the maximum is uh, 64, of course, uh, uh, eight uh, locations see eight uh, other uh, agents. and. Uh, and so you see there are only 11 uh, connections that are not there, uh, but uh, each of the edges in this, um, in this uh, network has a weight actually, uh, so uh, the number of uh, uh, connections. And uh, so uh, the minimum number for a pyramid C uh, of uh, this edge weight is uh, 4 and it's 24 for uh, pyramid uh, K. So that's a lot of a difference and uh, so it seems c quite ob obvious uh, mm, to uh, take a threshold at 24 and uh, uh, have a look at uh, the uh, network uh, that we get from this one. 
And, and so um, this uh, now um, pyramid C was uh, uh, first rank uh, uh, before, and now with this new centrality uh, measurement uh, measure, uh, we have uh, it on rank three uh, by now. So, uh, but uh, we can tweak uh, uh, our network a little bit by. Uh, uh, introducing um, other weights uh, for our network edges. Uh, and uh, this is uh, when uh, distances come in. Uh, so uh, you, uh, the people in the back uh, can see me uh, probably not as good as uh, the people in the front. And uh, um, so uh, for a ritual scene, uh, what kind of uh, distance is appropriate. Uh, and uh, look at uh, these ritual scenes. So there's a soccer scene as well, but uh, soccer in German is ritual. Uh, and, uh, so uh, um, my view is that it is not uh, the finger you want to see, but uh, it is more the uh, gestures you want to see. Uh, something like that. Uh, so uh, I measured my arm and it was six centimeter and said, okay, uh, six centimeter is something uh, you want to uh, uh, see. And uh, uh, there are uh, people uh, who have calculated things like that. And uh, uh, another uh, thing which influenced my research was uh, actually a PhD thesis on uh, uh, German soccer stadiums, uh, and uh, he, uh, um, there are, of course, we are German, so there are rules uh, about maximum distances, and uh, uh, so um, uh, these distances uh, should be taken into account somehow. And uh, uh, what uh, uh, I wanted to, to take into account as well is that uh, people could have something in their hands and wave with it, uh, not just the arm maybe. Uh, so uh, this uh, might still uh, be a good thing. So um, uh, I uh, uh, created a, a distance decay function uh, and said, okay, uh, people are still happy uh, uh, at uh, 32 uh, meters from the scene uh, and at 150 meters from the scene, it's quite okay still, uh, but uh, the, um, the crossover point is uh, here at 500 meters. You, well, it's not really nice. Uh, and um, ha having created this, uh, I reread uh, Ockburn and I found uh, that he had created uh, a similar uh, fall of curve uh, for uh, uh, fuzzy view sheds, uh, though his distances are uh, far bigger than mine. And uh, well, uh, I like my shape better than his uh, shapes, but uh, it's up to you uh, um, to uh, create uh, nice curves. Uh, and uh, another thing is, uh, uh, a a term from uh, um, economics, uh, diminishing marginal utility. Uh, so uh, um, seeing only one actor uh, or seeing no actor make, makes a lot of a difference. Uh, seeing one actor and or two actors makes more of a di uh, makes less of a difference. But seeing seven or eight uh, is not really that important. So. Um, uh, you can take this into account and uh, then uh, you get a new network and this uh, new network uh, compared to the previous one, uh, well, uh, the um, ranks are, are not so very different. So uh, what I did is uh, something uh, uh, very different uh, and uh, which is uh, a little bit close to the uh, presentation we had to, by Benjamin, I uh, made a, a spatial proximity uh, uh, network and uh, 
just included as many edges in this uh, spe uh, spatial pro uh, proximity network as are had in the intervisibility uh, network. And uh, um, so uh, the um, distance uh, threshold was 277.75 uh, meters. And uh, now uh, you see this is uh, more sparse. And, um, uh, has uh, uh, different uh, actions and uh, so um, I can also uh, define a stress value uh, based on this and um, uh, so you can see the difference uh, so more uh, visible than expected or less visible than expected and uh, then I went into the spectator data uh, having um, compared all these uh, uh, different centralities and uh, uh, spectators uh, are um, quite complex uh, uh, um, issue and uh, so uh, I run through this very quickly uh, so uh, in Colosseum in Rome uh, or in the stadium in uh, Germany so if you I expect my spectators to sit for long hours. Uh, so uh, you like to sit on a, a slope going down, and, uh, and so um, to uh, reduce the number of uh, possible spectator locations, I uh, um, created uh, accumulated uh, view sheds in the first place to find out uh, locations where uh, people could see at least three. Um, different uh, actors on my pyramids and then uh, I uh, went into calculation angles because if you sit on your hill and uh, look into the sea uh, you uh, don't want to uh, uh, you want to have your feet down and not feet up and uh, you have uh, some calculations to account for this one and uh, you don't want to have your head like that. Um, probably, well, down is not that bad. And uh, I did a lot of calculations along these lines, and uh, uh, even uh, if somebody blocks your view, and, uh, and uh, so uh, in the end, uh, mm, my program uh, did uh, strange things to me, and I uh, couldn't. Uh, finish uh, uh, the calculations, uh, though I uh, think uh, they are, uh, this is a valid approach uh, and uh, what I really would have liked to do is uh, uh, to uh, compare um, as a um, network induced by uh, the spectators uh, uh, to uh, that uh, and, um, found by uh, my intervisibilities and uh, by uh, the pro proximity network. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you.